Full Nindy Bundle. And Splatoon had a misfire this weekend. All this and so much more. As usual, Master of Ceremonies and the soundboard, Zach, could you, sir, uh, cue the music? Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Nintendo Dads Podcast. My name is Zach Erickson, and tonight is May 27th, 2015. Joining me tonight for Nintendo discussion and, uh, you know, predictions and, and whatever speculation was the word I was looking for, Justin Masson. What's going on, Justin? Hey, friends. How are you? It's Wednesday. I'm, I'm excited to be here. How about you guys? I am excited. You know, I had, I had a weird day. I think it's because I've been eating too much crappy food. Mm-hmm. And it makes me tired, but I'm feeling better tonight. So, speaking of tired, joining us as well is the king of VGTribune.com, Jesse Waldack. That was your your segues are getting weirder and weirder. <laughs> I like it. Keep it up. It's always a cavalcade of what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, we're just like I don't know what it is. It's just I think it just has to be that way now. This is the way that it's going to be. That's what happens uh, when so- they get one year older, I guess. I you know, right? Yeah, it was your birthday on Monday, right? Yes, happy it was. birthday. Uh, that's awesome, dude. Well, happy birthday to you. May this episode be what makes it all worthwhile. Make <laughs> living fo- living on is is a great thing, you know, <laughs> life and all that. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with this. Oh, do um, I. Right on. Uh, so this week, everybody. Uh, we are going to be foregoing the usual news. We'll kind of cut, touch on a couple of things, but for the most part, like Justin said in the intro, we are going to be talking s- about E3. We're going to do our E3 predictions, and with that, we're going to get straight into the news. Oh, maybe not. Not really the news, the predictions, I think. It's... Yeah, I just finished saying uh, we're not doing the news, and now I said we're doing the news. Uh, I still wanted the bumper. Let's yeah, it's it a nice down. bumper. you got to use it. I know, right? So uh, so let's talk first of all, before we get into E3, we had, you know, like you mentioned before, Justin, there was a little bit of a misfire for the Splatoon uh, global test fire this weekend. Did either of you guys get to play at all? No, I tried to. I tried to get on at the uh, four o'clock Mountain Standard Time is what it was. I tried to. I tried to get on, um, and had uh, had no success. I was able to get through like the demo section, and then just waited in queue to connect. Uh, so that was definitely a bugger. Yeah, I kind of had a similar sort of experience. Um, I actually, my brother texted me at probably like twenty after four, and was like. Hey, are you playing Splatoon right now? And I was like, no, oh, crap, I forgot. It's right now. Um, my wife and I were in the middle of like cleaning our office or something. It was just like, oh, crap, okay. Uh, like I quickly ran out and tried to, to play a little bit. And after about 10 minutes, I was like, all right, this isn't going to work. And then I left. And apparently, so apparently, though, they actually did extend it another hour afterwards, which was nice. Um, you know, this was a stress test. So, I mean, it's not completely unheard of for something like this to happen. But uh, yeah. Uh, you know, apparently after they fixed the problem and they put out the fires, then it was fine. So uh, that's coming out this Friday, guys. Holy crap. This time tomorrow, there will be half an hour till the till we all purchase digitally, right? Like, have we no. all got it downloaded already? No, I am a bricks and mortar guy for this one. What? Yeah. Oh, really? So are you like, are you, were you enamored by the, by the Smash Brothers costumes or like, what's the deal? Um, games even doing that? I for most of my games, most of my uh, games, I've been doing that. Yeah, so um, I don't know. I, I kind of I don't know why, but for my 3DS, I'm more digitalized, whereas opposed to my, um, I always feel like my space on my 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 Wii U is limited. So I kind of cautious that like I haven't installed a second drive or anything. So I feel very cautious of that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. And I and I, you know, I went down there and I did the pre order because I I was getting I wanted to make sure I pre ordered my my Amiibos at the same time. So I kind of did it all in one wave. Okay. Cool. Yeah, because I, I actually have like a... It's actually... The Wii U will only recognize a 2 terabyte drive on mm. there, like a 2 terabyte hard drive. I happened to have a 3 terabyte one that I wasn't really using. Like, I had it for, like, backed up photos, but I had a, have another one that's 1 terabyte. So I was just, like, moved everything onto the 1 terabyte one and then just did the 3 terabyte one onto my Wii U. And, yes, there's a terabyte of data that's just wasted in the process, but this way I can download all of my games pretty easily, so... 
Yeah. So yeah, I've so had, that's going to be I, this I've, weekend. I've had a two terabyte drive on my system since day one, and even even though I have gone all all digital on every almost every retail per game I have, I still have like sixteen hundred gig free. Yeah. So it's still a lot. A lot. So right on. No, I wasn't able to play the game because I was 350 miles away in Oklahoma. My wife's 20-year high school reunion was last weekend, so we were doing that. Wow, that's, ex that's exciting. But I was keeping an eye on Twitter during that first hour, and I saw everyone blow up, making the jokes about, it's Squid Jump Hour. <laughs> Squid yeah. Nice. Squid Jump yeah. test. So on Twitter, we did like a really quick poll uh, we took a screenshot of the of the searching for uh, battles to join, and I said, "Hey, if you're if you're stuck in the screen, give us a uh, retweet." We got eleven retweets from that, so it wow. seemed like it was kind of across the across the the everywhere that everyone was kind of um, stuck in that same situation as well. So, yeah, it seems like it, ev literally everything stopped at once. Which I mean, it's it, it is it's not a in my opinion, it's kind of like you you don't want to. Like yes, you want it to work, but at the same time, I feel like what probably was happening is that to run a good stress test, you also want to know what is what is the minimum we can get away with, mm -hmm. right? Like we don't want to have 80 million servers or whatever. I don't know this much about it, but my assumption would be that you would also want to know what is our minimum as well, so that we we aren't over preparing for this as well and being so ridiculous, right? So it's good to know that they, you know, of course it wouldn't have been. It wouldn't have been a good test if it wasn't, uh, you know, if there wasn't a little bit of downtime to know what their limits were. So, the the really interesting thing I kind of found found from this is although this 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 was a bit of a misstep, I think a couple things that really became apparent. Nintendo was able to resolve the issue in an hour. They then said, "Hey, we're going to extend, you know, give another hour." So they recognized the mistake, right? And I don't really know if this actually made, you know, we saw a lot of people on Twitter say like, "Told you guys, like it was a beta, and you, you know, there was going to be accidents." Right, like I think it's all about um, how a company, you know, faults up to the, or admits up to those mistakes and quickly resolves them, and what the impact is to you, especially when it's a new IP to the consumer base. One of my first thoughts was, you know, how is this really going to directly impact sales of it? Are you going to not purchase it now? So we did a quick poll again on Twitter, and we said, hey, are you getting Splatoon on launch weekend? If you are, give us a retweet, or are you waiting a few months? Uh, and if so, give us a favorite. And we had ten retweets and two favorites. So I, you know, I'm not saying this is like global polling, right? But a, a pretty good. It's not like a representative. Yeah, it's not a representative. <laughs> but it's a pretty good sampling of like the idea that you know people are still pretty, pretty okay with the idea of actually getting it this weekend as well, and not necessarily waiting. And this may not have actually changed their perception of it. Yeah, I kind of figure. Yeah, if if you're making your decision based on this one misstep, then I think it's kind of a, you, you know. I don't think that's what people are going to be basing their purchasing decisions on. Um, In the history of missteps, this one's minor. You know, think yeah. SimCity. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, think, exactly. think Diablo 3. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, like, the this is a bigger sort of, if you're going to be looking at misfires or, or missteps for Splatoon, it's more the, the delayed content that I that is a concern for me. But um, anyway... Yeah, and we, then, we've talked about that before. We're going to be talking about Splatoon all next week. That's that's kind of why we're getting this E3 stuff out of the way, so that we can talk all about Splatoon next week, and and then some sort of last minute stuff uh, the week after. So. And then to answer your other question, yes, I pre-ordered it, and yes, I already have it preloaded. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I, I I have mine loaded. Uh, I will be launching it at ten o'clock tomorrow night. Did you do the pre-order directly from eShop? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I, I downloaded it and it's waiting. Okay. It's waiting there. So. I did the pre-order through the website. And then on Monday they charged my my credit card and sent me the uh, the code to apply it to the to eShop to mm -hmm. st to start the download and then we just have to wait for 24.5 hours from now to uh, get the update to turn it on. Sweet. And I will uh, I will pick it up on Friday from a brick and mortar store where you guys will have already 12 hours in advance on me. Yeah, I'll already be level 10 and and dreary eyed. I don't know. I don't know if that's true. <laughs> it's possible, depending on how good it is. Uh, right on. Well, let's head into our E3 predictions, shall we, gentlemen? Do it. Uh, I'm going to play this uh, this bumper right here. I don't even know what it does. Let's find out. <laughs> it's a good bumper. It's a good bumper. Awesome. There we go. This is our E3 predictions. Uh, and, yeah, right on. So, basically what we're going to do is 
sort of a round robin style, taking turns. It'll go, we'll, we'll go like uh, Jesse, Justin, and then me, and then going around in a circle. Um, you know, the, the the circle in quotation marks, you can see these air quotes. Um, and yeah, we'll just kind of go around. I'm sure that we're going to have some that are overlapping or, you know, we can kind of have commentary on each other's. We can call each other stupid if they, we think they're stupid. I don't know. That sort of thing. And, so, and, I, th and I think what we're also going to do, like, you know, we are going to document this. We're going to kind of kind of treat, keep a little bit of score here. Yeah. Um, and uh, the winner after E3 will be called the E3 2015 Victor. That sort of thing. Oh, um, and maybe we'll find a little picture of a crown or something we put on their heads. Whoa, what's going on? I heard myself. Sorry, I turned, I, I locked into the Twitch stream, and normally it's or it's pre-muted, but for some for some reason it was not muted this time. Mm. Well, you know what they say about going into Twitch unknowingly. Oh. It's like a box of chocolates. You never know what you are going to get. <laughs> <laughs> I I have to every week. I'm you, sorry. You're going to wear that, sound, that button down on your side. No it's way, pretty, man. It's pretty fantastic. It's pretty awesome. Uh, you know what? I, I it, It's like a gift that just keeps on giving. <laughs> okay, cool. So uh, let's go with round one. Jesse, what is your first prediction? Right. How many predictions did we agree say we should have? This uh, five? Five. All right, because I, all right, cause I, thought we, uh, I thought you said three in the pre-show. That's why I was wondering. I do have five that I think are reasonable. And then I have, okay. a, I have a sixth one we can throw at the end that is, I really want it to happen, but I doubt it. Okay. Cool. So, so my first one is uh, pre E three at the World Championships. They will announce a new Mario game, just like that Fred Savage movie. Oh. So, like, what kind of a like what kind of a Mario game? I I'll be honest. I have not seen this this movie that the you Wizard. You What? You need I've never to. seen it. I just don't like. It, I think it was just like. I was just like a little bit too young for this to happen. I'm the oldest in my family, and like, oh, that's true. What year did it come out? I don't know. Eighty nine, I think. Ninety. Yeah. See, I would have been four years old then, and I was the oldest in my family, so I kind of probably missed that. Yeah, I, I was in high school at that point. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. So I think that. Okay. So, like, what kind of a Mario game are you thinking? Like, do you want to be specific? Do you want to? Um, three a three D Mario. Um probably more along the lines of like at the galaxy uh, i'm hoping th they come up with something new not just a galaxy 3 but mm -hmm. it, if they innovate like they did with world 3d world i would be happy i don't okay. i don't want a galaxy 3 i don't want a 3d world 2 i want something new okay i just don't so know what i just mario don't know game. what that is this is something else new that we haven't 3D seen yet. mario game for wii u specifically yes okay at, announced at the World Championships. Okay, I feel like I feel like we need to have an over under for each of these, but I think that's <laughs> a little bit too a little bit too uh, sophisticated for our liking as well. <coughs> but yeah, okay, cool. So uh, so new 3D Mario game. All right, Justin, what is your first prediction? So my first prediction actually builds a little bit off of Jesse's idea. Is I do think. You know, this is the 30th year of, of Mario, or Mario, we, we do know that. I don't think Mario Maker is the end-all, be-all uh, for what we're going to see in the 30th year. I do suspect we will see a Galaxy 3, a Super Mario Galaxy 3. Okay. Super Mario Galaxy 3. Yeah, I'll put that in my doc. Okay. Right on. Cool. So, uh, yeah, I think... I don't know. Like I, okay. I'm I'm not sure if that is the sort of thing. Like I I, I don't want to crap all over everybody's predictions, but I also feel like we should comment on each other's predictions as well. Sure, That's you can fair. call me crazy. I don't know. What do you guys think? Like like what do you think, Jesse? You feel like super like Galaxy Three would be good, or, or you, you said you wanted something new? Well, I, I'll. It's one of those things that you know. There's this what I want, and you know, and it's not what I want, but I'll play it anyway. And it's not the Mario game that you want, but it's the one you deserve. <laughs> God, yes. <laughs> I was trying to not go there, but yes. Okay. In fact, I've got some, one of my other predictions is almost along the same lines, and I, you probably yeah, know what kind I, of... you probably know what I'm going to say. Yeah, it's because I've said my... it before. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Uh, yeah, I feel like... I Well, they, they've said that they're not... Are they? I don't know if they're planning on another Mario, big Mario game, um, this this uh, generation, I guess, on Wii U. And so that's, I guess, I wonder if if they would save it for save it for the NX and really blow it out of the water in, for the NX. You know yeah. what I mean? I mean, I I, th- I think you're right. I think you know we have heard them say that there's we are not having another Mario game uh, to show, but they also said they'd have Zelda, and they lied. Um, so I don't, I don't feel like it's um, uncommon for them to think. That usually, that's... usually when Nintendo um, does not meet expectations, it's because they've fallen away from expectations and not exceeded them. Right. <laughs> but I, but I, but I think the other thing is, you know, we we know that this is the 30th anniversary of Mario. Yeah. I don't think Mario Maker is enough to tantalize and to satisfy the the longevity and the history that that character has brought to the industry. I think they're going to do. They're, it's going to be some kind of big blowout. But on the same yeah. time, if this is going to be an NX game, they're not going to say anything. No, we're not gonna, until next. Yeah, if it's going to be an NX, they ain't going to say anything. Yeah, I also feel like, like while I agree with you that Mario Maker uh, does not really live up to that 30th anniversary celebration, I don't necessarily know if Nintendo shares that opinion. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like they've been, they've been showing this at the Game Awards, and they've been like, they've, they've really been, you know, showing this off a lot. And this is the game that they're taking to Best Buy, and so, like, it may be the 30th anniversary of Mario is Mario Maker because yeah. that's how they're choosing to position it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's also, it's also similar, a similar sort of situation where the Nintendo World Championships qualifiers are. Uh, Ultimate NES Remix because that is how they are choosing to position it, even though the quality may not line up with it. Does that make sense? Like, or the caliber, I guess. And one of the games, I, I, Mario I would love, 1, Mario 3, that, and uh, Dr. Mario or something like that. <laughs> Mario, yeah, Mario, I, Mario. Actually, I actually I actually played a round of the championship mode on, on uh, Ultimate NES Remix 3DS like just before we started recording, and it's literally... Get 50 coins in Mario 1 as fast as you can. Get 25 coins in Mario 3 as fast as you can. Take the rest of your time to rack up a high score in Dr. Mario. That's what you do. It's like six minutes. So, I mean, it's a fun mode, but anyway, that's kind of a that's kind of a distraction. Um, but Super Mario th- Galaxy 3 for Wii U is your number one prediction, Justin. Yeah, that's that's what I'm going to start off. I, I'm, I'm kind of going for the fences for a lot of these things. You'll see as I'm continuing to unroll them. Okay, cool. All right. So my first prediction is now the recently the Pokemon company has been teasing big projects and they recently announced what you know there was supposedly this big announcement that was coming that was that ended up being like Pokemon Super Mystery Dungeon or something like that. And everybody was super disappointed. <laughs> I am going to call that the next game in the the normal Pokemon series is going to be announced at E3 and it will directly tie into amiibo oh so that is my yeah that is my number one prediction i'm not sure if they'll do cards or figures or what but it will the next the next mainline pokemon game will be announced and it will have amiibo integration that is my and it'll probably have new 3ds features of some kind i'm not sure you know whether that's again if that's amiibo integration if that is improvement you know improvement on the engine from the processing power and actually getting like full 3D. I'm not sure what it is, but there will be new 3DS integration in there. Um, That's so yeah, be awful in the market. Yes, it, it, with you know new Pokemon-based amiibo, it means a new a new things to be a shortage on. Which now you have a wider audience because you have all these little kids interested in it, where maybe the kids aren't as interested in the other amiibo, mm-hmm. but they will be on this one. And it will also create a shortage for those little hockey pucks for the people who don't have a new 3DS. That's the, that's the next thing I was going to say is they need to yeah. really beef up the supply of the... Uh, have they, Has that even been announced, released yet, or is that still in the... Uh... That is releasing the same day as the Animal Crossing card game. Okay. Or the Happy Home Designer. Yeah, so that, that thing, they have to get that thing out there. Yeah. And, and who knows, and, they, they may put like a, a package deal in that, you know? They would uh, almost like, have to. Yeah. So yeah, there we go. Because that is my number one. I, I would not recommend a little kid getting a new 3DS XL just so they could use an Amiibo. 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? Like all these kids with like a 2DS and, and a hockey puck the, thing the quick, and an amiibo. Like how many little dongle what's it? Now will the dongle what? work with the 2DS? Does that yes, have an IR it, port? It's entirely, it's entirely through the IR port. Yeah. All right. So I wasn't sure if the 2DS had an IR port in it as well or not. Yeah, it does. Okay. Yeah, because there are certain games that require it, right? So, and I think I think that some of the uh, I think it was Mario. Was it Mario Kart that used the? I don't know what games use the IR port, but I know some of them do. So I've never. I've only ever. Poke, I'm almost sure that Pokemon does actually through the through trading. I think there's an infrared trade thing there. Oh yeah. So. Yeah, I never so, got yeah. far in X and Y, so I did, don't know what they what they do. Mm -hmm. So I mean, they could either do maybe maybe this is the sort of thing where they revisit the smaller amiibo figures, right? Or they could basically do exactly what they did with Pokemon Shuffle with the blind bags. That didn't go over very well, but I can see them doing it again, anyways. I don't know. Those so, ones were fragile. We'll I ended up having like five of them break off their base. Oh, really? So yeah. Okay. So yeah. Anyway, that's that is my prediction new mainline Pokemon game with Amiibo tie-in. Uh, Jesse, your turn for your number two prediction. Alright, I'll kind of go along the same lines as you did. I'll say the next Pokemon game will not be Pokemon Z. Instead, will be uh, they'll do something similar to what they did in Generation 5 where they had Black 2 and White 2. Hmm. Okay, so it's uh, so it's like a X2 and Y2 or something like that? Yeah, it'll be some additional pair instead of just being a third game. Okay, so a sequel in the same, within the same generation. Yes. Okay. Because, cool. why not? Because there's more money that way. Because the, it, the fact that they would only sell one of them is just less money for them. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know, they did it once, they'll probably never go back again. So. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing is, is like with the, with the, um, with the, these games, the new 3DS hardware really does, like, represent a pretty good opportunity for them to fix some of the problems with X and Y and Ruby and Sapphire, or Omega Ruby and, you know, those remakes. Uh, especially with that engine, like, I that engine in those, in those, in the 3DS games thus far, with, with it being, like, the inconsistent 3D with the choppy sort of, uh, you know, frame rate that can happen... Uh, I, it, I, it is I, definitely needing to be to be beefed up a little bit. Yeah, and I, I did hear that the the new processor power from the new the, the new system really doesn't help much. It's still pretty choppy. But I also don't it's, yeah, think... I think I did try it. It wasn't. It did help a little bit, but it wasn't a ton. But at know? the same time, I don't think they'll spend a lot of effort to fixing that. It'll still just be the same engine and mm -hmm. just slap on a new story. Yeah, yeah. I think, and who knows? Maybe they'll. Because, yeah, yeah, they're annualizing Pokemon, and they, they've had a new Pokemon game now for what six years in a row. Mm -hmm. They've they they can't they have to get as much as they can out of that engine. Yeah, yeah. They definitely need to do that. That's for sure. So, I don't know. I'm kind of fatigued on Pokemon, anyways, right now. I I'm not just because I say that they're, that they're going to do this the this new Pokemon game doesn't necessarily mean um, that I'm excited about it. I still am oh, like halfway through Pokemon Omega Ruby and I'm just like... Eh. Yeah, I've, I've been burned out too. I didn't even buy last year's game and I only got maybe three or four hours into the into X or Y or whichever one I ended up mm -hmm. with. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm excited about like I know there are people who are really excited about that franchise and, right. and it's a big seller. Roger. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, Roger, absolutely. For sure. Uh, cool. So, yeah, any thought, Justin, do you have any thoughts on, on mine or Jesse's prediction about Pokemon? When is Pokemon Shuffle 2 coming out? Hey, did you see there's an update for Pokemon Shuffle? I know, I've been, I, man, I'm, I'm rocking Pokemon Shuffle. Did you know that there's a, a bonus now to make guys easier to catch? Shut up, what? I saw that just, like, there's an update that was just today, I think, that there's, like, you know, those updates that, or those bonuses that you can purchase? Yep. Apparently, there's one now that makes guys easier to catch. Really? Hmm. Interesting. Which seems like cheat mode, but it does. I'm at like 150, and that's been all this guy. There's your pay to win guy. button. Yeah, I'm and not. I am go. not doing that. I'm not doing that. 
Um, I, I've never really gotten into Pokemon. I, like, I'm not kidding. Everyone thinks I'm being facetious here. I'm really not. I never got into Pokemon or Pokemon until, uh, and I'm not in it into it. But my first Pokemon game I played is literally Pokemon Shuffle. <laughs> I'm not kidding nice. anyone here. See, I was a, I was like, I was the prime target age. Maybe a little bit old, but I don't know. The sort of the, the age when it came out. I was in like, in like. Seven or seventh or eighth grade when that game came out, the original Pokemon Blue, mm. and so I was like, I ate that thing up. It was yeah. So I I, awesome. I had sort of aged out of that one. Yeah. Yeah. You you don't want to know how old I was when that game was was new. <laughs> old enough, right? <laughs> I feel like every time we bring up age in this show, it's like, oh yeah, like Jesse's like, oh I remember this great thing from my childhood, and I was like, yeah, I was still in diapers when that happened. And then <laughs> or you you say something from your childhood, and I'm like, yeah, I was already in college. <laughs> nice okay uh justin what is your number two prediction uh my number two number two prediction and again guys so i'm i'm like swinging for fences here you guys know this one i'm gonna say we are going to see a uh a luigi sequel in some context um whether that's for 3ds or for wii u uh in the vein of the mansion um dark moon mansion you mean you moon don't mansion. think it'll be another 13 years between no i don't think so Hmm. So, so you're not you're not sure if it's Wii U or 3DS. I I think it's going to be 3DS. To be honest, um, how I I I flounder on that one because I think it had success obviously on the GameCube, but we also saw really great success on the um, on the 3DS recently. So, but I do think it's going to be a new Luigi focused game. Okay, new Luigi focused game. Are you tying yourself to the Mansion series or no? Uh, I am. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So a Luigi's Mansion series game, unsure if it's 3DS or Wii U. Again, guys, I'm I'm like going I'm going fences on this one. I'm yeah. Like, oh, let's see what happens here, kids. One well, of these might stick. I, I feel like some of these, looking at them, um, yeah. Anyway, some That's of these, I'm, I'm I'm like being a little bit too. Too uh, too cautious. Then, well, if that's if that's how we're playing this game. I well, here's like well the, here's the the reason that I'm saying that is I think we know and the reason I'm going for swing for the fences is because we know a lot of what's already going to be at E3. Yeah. Right. We know Mario Maker is going to be there. We know Star Fox is going to be there. Right. We know there's going to be some type of amiibo news. Um, mm -hmm. So I think those things are, are kind of like they're givens, but unto which degree. Um, right. We know, you know, you know, Z, um, Chron uh, Xenoblade Chronicles is going to be there, so we know a lot. So that's why I'm saying, like, I'm just going to go wild, like, yeah. like because basically I basically we're all, we're like, all none, none of us knew, it. none of us knew Splatoon was going to show up, none of us knew yeah. Codename Steam or Mario Maker was showing up, so no one would have guessed those. So that's why I'm saying, like, let's just swing. That's the way I'm playing. That's all. Cool. Right on. Um, so my. Uh, what do you think, Jesse, about about a uh, new Luigi's Mansion game? That kind of fits in with similar to a d another one of my predictions coming up. Except okay, for his I is will... far more specific than mine. Okay, cool. So we will we will put a button in that. I think I think that um, yeah, we shall see. Very cool. <laughs> 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 okay, my number two prediction is. is that um, that we will see now. I mean, part of this is pretty obvious, but part of it is a little bit more specific. Uh, the Miyamoto games that we saw last year, specifically Project Giant Robot and Project Guard, we will see both of them there, and we will see one of. They will announce that one of those two is available either immediately after the direct or the next week. Sometimes you know. Sometimes they'll say it's right now, and sometimes they'll say it will be available next, whatever, next Thursday, or you know, with it. I'll say within within two weeks of the of the uh, digital event, one of the two Miyamoto games will be released. Okay. Nice. Uh, so yeah, I'm not sure which one. I hope that it's giant. It's giant robot because that game looks ridiculous. But. Uh, <laughs> I I don't know for sure. Like I I don't know. I the more I think back, I feel like I almost have this sort of idealized version of what that game was. Yeah, I don't uh, remember what that was at all. I have, have more of a recollection of Guard. The so Giant Robot was like you're you're these obviously like it's like a sumo fighting game, but you're giant robots in Japan, and you use the accelerometer in the gamepad 
to control your center of gravity so you don't fall over. So it's all like gyroscope based. So you have to like lean way forward in order to not have your huge like robot tip over when he, when it gets hit. It's really weird, but like from from the demos that I saw of it, but it looked also like the the potential it was was pretty cool yes. overall. These but. weren't playable on the show floor last year, were were they? They, they, were the they played them. They played them on the Treehouse yeah. uh, live stream. I remember that, and that's right. where I was like, this but the, game is so weird. But it wasn't available for others to try. No, it wasn't hands-on. Okay. No, it wasn't. No, they were just kind of showing it off. So it, w- it was like gameplay, you know, essentials. But, right. I mean, that would be a great game too, by the way, uh, where they have some sort of cool amiibo integration where you could, like, decorate your robot with, like, decals and stickers and stuff like that if they're going to go go that way but i'm Make i'm not gonna turn your robot into a mario just like the uh the yarn yoshis <laughs> yeah right oh those those are great by the way the fact that they're doing that mint like it supports over 40 amiibos at launch that is so awesome where literally every single amiibo will give you a skin of yoshi that is just brilliant what does it look I like if that. you use a yoshi amiibo <laughs> if you use a if you use like the super mario one it actually creates a plastic one Really? Like you become plastic, and, and you have to use the yarn one to create a yarn Yoshi. Right. Uh-huh. Yeah, it becomes it becomes plastic. It's cool. Uh, okay, so uh, Jesse, what is your number three prediction? Okay, so I'm I, here's a more of a number, and not, just nothing specific. Just I think at least five new games will be announced that we have not heard of yet. Oh wow. So, oh. so your your Miyamoto demos from last that was announced last year don't count. Yeah, you know, Mario Maker doesn't count. Star Fox doesn't count. Anything that we, has been mentioned before doesn't count. With at least two of them being out before the end of this year. Hmm. I like it. And the previously so, mentioned uh, X two and Y two possibilities counts as one game. Okay. So the so there there are existing IPs that we're, we that we could potentially be aware of. Yeah, so if, it, if uh, they say Galaxy 3 is announced, that's one. Okay. If they say chickens and feet, that's two. And I'm, not counting, <laughs> and I'm not counting anything in an indie montage. This is Nintendo... Nintendo well, published. Nintendo yeah. published big titles. Okay. Because I'm going to see, we're going to see 10 new games in an indie montage. We know that. Oh, yeah. I'm not counting those. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I like that. I think that that is... Because they need to be ambitious, knowing with an X coming down, okay. they, they need people to have a reason to still want a Wii U if they haven't bought one yet. Okay, clarifying question, just for spe- specificity here, if we're doing this point system. Um, do, what if it has been announced for a different region, but not for North America? Like, for example, Rhythm Heaven. Does that count, yes or no? I would it's say five. no. It doesn't, it's five that are totally unheard of so far. Yes. Okay. All right. Which is cool. very specific. Which also, yeah, the, I wanted the, to know because I didn't want to get caught which, up in the technicalities later. Which <laughs> you also, want that crown. <laughs> yeah. Which, you know, my, I want it, but I doubt it'll happen. I mentioned three games specifically. If they are mentioned, they don't count because they are, they are known quantities in Japan. Mm hmm. Okay. I'm game. That sounds good. Cool. I, I really hope that comes true. Right on. Uh, Justin? Uh, I'm going to say it. Uh, Metroid. Oh. I also have this down. And you, What are your specifics for Metroid? <laughs> that it's Metroid and it's on the Wii U. Okay. That's it. I don't care whether it's Prime 4. I don't care whether it's other M, the Electric Boogaloo sequel, I don't care, but Metroid will be announced. I Here's a challenge I have with the statement I'm going to make. Mm-hmm. Nintendo has very much said that they will be focusing on games that you can play in 2015. I don't think Metroid is ready for 2015. If it is, like, awesome, but I feel like it's more something they're going to position into a 2016 spot. They've but, also, you know what, though, when they when they announced their business briefing that is going on the same time as the digital event... They also did say a preview of games coming in 2016. Yeah. So they have said that 2016 is going to be on, on the the agenda, right? Yeah, like, but 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 we know, like especially after the Zelda fiasco, 
they they very dedicatedly said we want to focus on games you are playing this year. Yeah. Having said that, they, there's no reason that they couldn't give a trailer. That's actually yep. that's actually my next one as well. You're saying specifically Metroid on Wii U. Yes. Uh, mine is specifically Metroid by Retro. Oh, okay. So Retro Studios <laughs> is doing the new Metroid. I don't care if they do a Metroid for 3DS. Frankly, I don't know. I don't think they would. And I don't. I don't care if it's Metroid Prime, uh, the Metroid Prime series. But I think that Metroid or Retro is doing Metroid. Um, and if that means that they take a totally different approach to the same franchise, then that's what they do. Um, but I, I think that that's definitely what. Um, that is my prediction for Metroid. You're gonna like this. I I got my prediction. My next prediction goes even deeper than that. Oh man! I say Retro Studios' new Metroid game will be announced. Like I said in the past, I'm hoping for a 2D or hybrid game like Other M versus an all first-person game like the Prime series, but it will likely be Prime Four, and then I'll cry internally. <laughs> right then. Nice. Yeah. So it sounds like it sounds like all three of us are. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So so let's so, let's. so that actually brings us right back to me. Is that right? It yeah. Does. So you, so. So we're all thinking you're specifically so just to clarify Jesse you're specifically saying Metroid Prime 4. Well, or are you just saying I, I'm Metroid? S- I'm saying okay, it it's Retro Studio makes a Metroid game and I'm just kind of speculating at that point thinking okay. you know, I'm wanting something other besides a Prime game but I'm thinking it'll likely be a Prime game. Okay. <clears throat> so so are you saying Prime Prime yes or no? <laughs> it's okay if you say no it's okay if you say yes um, I, I don't know <laughs> it's, a, it's okay if you say it's okay if you don't specify I, I don't want to specify Okay, so I, just just wanted, retro. I just wanted to make okay. the joke that I'll cry if, uh, if yes. it is okay well because crying I, is definitely I, because I probably concretely. will yeah you heard it here part of Jesse's con- uh, guess is that he will cry mm-hmm. okay done <laughs> alright <laughs> Okay, Justin, what is your number four prediction? My number four one, I, I'm kind of bundling or lumping in in some kind of vast statements. So I'm going to use kind of the statement of uh, digital download support is the word I'm going to use there. Okay. Uh, and what I mean from that is that they're going to outline their download or so their DLC ideas that include Super Mario or Mario Kart 3 smash brothers um and more on their splatoon outline so it's kind of like the digitalized support they're going to be providing okay. but they're also going to lean into like how you're going to use they're going to use more digital you know you're going to we're going to talk about it a little bit but like the indie hun- humble bundle that was this this month mm-hmm. how they're going to continue relationships that way and roll out ideas of like you know the you know nes um, or uh, NES Humble Bundle or the SNES hun- Humble Bundle. Um, so will I, this be actual Humble Bundle or will this be like just like the same sort of package? Um, I, I think I think something along the lines of like a Humble Bundle. Okay, so yeah. specifically through Humble Bundle then. Yeah, just like yeah, yeah, through Humble bu- Humble Bundle. I think you're going to continue that relationship. So it's more like a digital strategy, I guess. Is what I'm going to say. Okay, I could I could. Uh... I could see that. So a specifically a humble bundle uh, on the just like any sort of eShop or just or digital distribution. Digital distribution. For a humble bundle. Okay. Yeah. Digital strategy well, plus their DLC. Okay. Are, are you lumping DLC into that same thing? Yeah, I'm, that's what I'm kind of saying, a digitalized strategy more than anything else. Okay, cool. So, yeah, that makes sense. I'm actually going to go into mine. Um... And this one, I think it kind of is the same, but also different. Um, the I'm going to say they're going to talk about their new membership service, which I know they've said is not really going to be... I think I heard something that it's not going to be finished till the fall, at least in its full form. Um, I kind of am going to, going to be optimistic about this, though, and say they're going to outline their new membership service, and they're going to announce the equivalent of a Nintendo subscription service, kind of like PlayStation plus or something like that. But I'm going to basically call it, whether it's 
PlayStation Plus or or uh, and I mean or Netflix or something like that, but a subscription service for Nintendo accounts, um, the sort of yearly yearly subscription online service. Um, this could be this could be like a PlayStation Plus model. It could be like a virtual console Netflix sort of model, um, but some sort of a subscription service that will be outlined as part of the new membership service. Nice. So that, and I think that that will be because basically what they want to do here is when they, you know, it's not going to be enough for them just to say, oh, we have this new membership service. It's really cool. They're going to need to have something to pull people in. And if it can also increase the value for, for anybody who owns a Wii U, then that is a huge boon for them. And I think that is the reason why I think that they're going to have some sort of a, a value add for that membership service as well. Because, um, because otherwise it's, it's, it's not going to be that exciting. And they don't want to go the route of Club Nintendo where it's all physical goods. You know, you can see them moving away from that a lot. So it's going to be digital goods as an incentive. So, cool. Are you guys still there? Yep. Yeah. Sorry, I had to run and grab something real fast. Oh yeah, you, no, it's fine. You know, so, is this something that you know, so, so subscription, like something you have to pay for every month or year, right? What you're talking about to get whatever they're offering? Yeah, like I don't think it's going to be that every single person has to have that. There will probably be, I would imagine, sort of a two-tiered system, similar to like the Xbox Silver and Gold or whatever, right? But there will be good benefits for everybody, just the regular sort of what we'd call like a Club Nintendo member. Everybody gets good benefits if you buy the games and you'll get points and all that kind of stuff. Maybe like the digital deluxe promotion yeah. sort of equivalent. But then there will also be a premium level on top of that that is that sort of PlayStation Plus model where you would see something like a virtual console subscription service or something like that. I would say they'd have to be careful of their pricing. You know, I think, like, PlayStation Plus, I think, is priced well. You know, $50 for a year. Plus, you get it, what ends up being, like, 75 free games throughout the year if you have a Vita and a PS3 and a PS4. Yeah. Um, but their PlayStation Now service, not good in the pricing. Yeah. Have you heard no, about that? No, that's very true. Yeah, it's like $50 for three months. That's ouch. Yeah, and it's not it's not very successful at all, right? Because it's way too expensive. And the and the game they don't, they don't they don't have a really good selection of games to choose from. At least none of the games there I want to play, mm -hmm. or I already own them, so I don't need the service to play it. Yeah, so I guess my I guess to to kind of sum it up in a, a real simple sort of way is they will outline the new membership service, give a release date, but also outline a paid premium tier of that subscription service or that of that membership service that has not yet been talked about. Um, and something in there about DNA. I don't know if they'll necessarily say DNA in there, but they will talk about, you know, uh, it will be pretty obvious that, that a lot of that back end stuff will be dealt with uh, for DNA. So, or by DNA. Uh, so yeah, uh, Jesse, that what is your final number five prediction? Okay, I said running low on high profile IPs for holiday. Now that Zelda has been pushed, I think Star Fox will have to be the big holiday game. Cool. Star Fox is the big one. I agree. That's not gonna that's not one of mine, but I, I, <laughs> I totally I totally agree with that. I kind of I, I kind of wish I would have done that because my last one is gonna be a little bit risky. But yeah, no, I agree. I think that they really don't what else do they have other than Mario Maker, yeah, right? Maybe one of those five games that they haven't announced yet. Maybe yeah, hit, but yeah, you know, of the ones we know about, uh, I don't. I don't think Mario Maker is it. Mm. Yeah, I don't think so. So Star Fox is all I got left. Mm hmm. Right on. Uh, any any other predictions with with Star Fox? How like that is gonna that is gonna bring that up to? Because right now there's a lot of people who are kind of saying, oh well, Star Fox is kind of you know some people are saying it's gonna be like. Uh, like a lower tier, sort of like a Captain Toad pricing, um, or is it going to be a full retail game? Um, you know what? It depends on how much replayability is in it. Added to this game because I know Sorry, I've, so I've I've never been good at the games. I never got into them, but I know like the the Star Fox sixty four and the three DS remake. While the one playthrough is short, 
it's got a lot of replayability in that there's Mm -hmm. many paths to choose from and each path leads to a different layout of enemies and different obstacles to go over. Some are easier than others. So Hmm. there is replayability and, and incentive to do it more than once. So as long as they keep that up, I think they can get away with maybe not a $60 game, but maybe a 50 yeah, like think, a Wind Waker pricing? Yeah. Okay, cool. I, I I think it'll be more than a 40 game. Yeah, right on. It, it, again, this is their holiday title, it has to be. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they can't be coming out with just a little $40 game and that's it. Uh, and it's not like Xenoblade Chronicles X is going to be their holiday game, right? Like, it's way too niche of a title. Definitely. Um, so I, I don't think that's going to be it. And Mario Maker... We already know it's coming out in September, so that's not a holiday game either. Yeah. They'll push it. They'll have a big push behind it, but uh, you know, and it will be a big part of their holiday strategy. But I don't think that it's going to be a, like their holiday game. So, cool. I'm, okay. I'm gonna. I'm. I'm not gonna. This isn't gonna be my final response, but I'm. But a, a little bit. I'm gonna actually tie into Jesse's on, on, on a thought there. Um, I think you're also gonna see an amiibo line associated with it. Ah, I agree. That would be awesome. I. Dang it! No, <laughs> but <laughs> yes, I, I would I would like that though. That would be really cool. Uh, it's actually interesting, like as far as like specific amiibo that have not been announced yet. Uh, you know, because we know we're, there's probably going to be a big an- amiibo announcement. Um, what? You know, there's going to be more amiibo, so you would think at least we're going to see. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. This is just this is not an official prediction. But I'm, you know, they had their, like, glass case last year with all the Amiibos inside that were totally not the real thing. Um, that didn't have, like, the P, the P link stand or whatever. They're going to have one that's way bigger that has, like, every single one of them in a single display. I don't know why I think that, but it will happen. Anyway, Justin, what is your, <laughs> what is your final prediction? Yeah, my fun, my final prediction is kind of actually building off the amiibo idea. Um, we are going to see uh, we are going to see a little bit of an uh, an actual formalized apology for the amiibo, more than just the Facebook oh. or sorry, but more of a. And I mean, the way that they're going to do it is like we recognize that it's such a tremendous thing. People are are doing it. We recognize there have been some delays. We're hoping to have those delayed uh, or those resolved. By the way, here's the awesome amiibo stuff that we have. So they're going to show some more cards. Obviously, I think they're going to build in more of a strategy. So we've seen the Animal Crossing cards. We're going to see another game that's going to lean into those cards ideas. And I think, I mean, this is where I think something like a Pokemon might, Pokemon might come into play. Um, but I think we're going to see another line of Amiibo. I do think it's going to be something like a Star Fox. I wouldn't be shocked. Um, I, I think they're also going to offer a feature where you can... Um, Request a design like a, a personalized amiibo being built. Oh, I almost made this my last of, of your me. And I actually, sorry, I have, amiibo? that's hard yeah, to say. Sorry, I have one last kind of statement I wanted to make. Uh, I know it's not a prediction, but another thing that we are going to see. So, yeah, this is this is all amiibo. They're going to talk a ton about amiibo because they're making bank on it. I'd so, buy crazy one of strategies. Those. Yeah. Oh, I would too. At least, um, um, at least with that, there won't be any shortages because you have to pre order it. Yeah. It's you customized to, you pre-order. Custom, yeah, you have to customize yeah. it. Uh, but, it'll, but it'll be it'll be like the delay time will be like six months. It'll be like an Apple uh, iWatch, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> um, the other thing I did want to say, and, and just before we kind of step off this, it's not really a prediction. I do think we're actually going to see some early results from the, the Smash ballot, by the way. Uh, oh, Smash yeah. Bowl. I think we're going to see them say, like, we've, we've been hearing your responses, and we're excited to announce that we, we, do, we will have the following three fighters and this is we talked about this several episodes ago but they've probably already had what i'm calling wireframes of some fighters potentially built that we're just kind of seeing where the general populace is going to be so they may be able to quickly respond and say we can definitely confirm that king king rule is going to be in there or or fox or sorry um uh, metal gear what's his name snake Snake. snake's going to be in there right so so maybe there's going to be a couple of these statements are going to make um, but these aren't going to be necessarily the final results from the, from the, um, from the poll, from the actual like, hey, you've said you wanted the following people, so we have the following people. This is going to kind of be like some, like we're not going to see Shovel Knight there yet. 
because they're still working through that kind of stuff. It's going to be people they've, they've already kind of had their property on that they can really easily lean into those relationships with. I want to see Patty Wagon. <laughs> nice. That's a joke. So, uh, so, yeah, no, I totally agree. So, um, yeah, I think, I think Lucas, I think they will probably announce for very soon after E3. Right, like if not, if not one of those, and it's right now, sort of thing. And we all get to watch Roger lose his mind. Yeah, and we watch him weep again. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, like especially if he's if he's at E three, that he won't be able to actually go somewhere to buy it because he's tied up, and then by the time mm-hmm. he's home, they're all gone. Aww. Yeah. we love so, you, Roger. All the all the all of the DLC is gone. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I know. I think that's that's a good idea. Uh, so, just to confirm for your final prediction for the ballot, um, what is your like your formalized your see an amiibo apology is specifically? Yeah, like like in the way that Nintendo would apologize, which is a non apology. Yeah, non apology like, of like I'm we sorry. We love that you're so. Yeah, we're we're very we our fans are awesome. We appreciate it. Please understand. So, yeah, please understand that we're working on it. By the way, here's more things that we will we'll throw at you that will create this problem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what it's going to be. Please understand. There it is. Yeah, there we go. It actually, I forgot to put it on my soundboard this time, so, oops. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Uh, cool. So, um, my final one is probably going to be, I almost feel like it's the most controversial or risky of them all, of mine at least, um, and that is that they are going to take some sort of, they're going to make some sort of a, a strategy or some sort of an effort to make the Wii U more compelling. Now, the two that I have specifically thought of are either a price drop or a hardware update for the Wii U. I don't know which of the two they would be, um, but as the Wii U stands right now, it is not compelling enough of a purchase for the general population. And so I think they're either going to drop that price or have some ridiculous bundle or have a hardware update like with a with a slimmer gamepad and like a you know sort of updated profile for the hardware. I'm not sure which of those two they are, but the I would probably well, my prediction think is, is that, that not necessarily adjusting the hardware you know, externally, but maybe instead of only 32 gig, throw 128 in there. Mm, yeah see like the yeah my prediction is lying more in making the wii u a more appealing purchase outside of the software library like the actual hardware itself becomes a more appealing purchase i don't really know what that is you know but but adding adding something right. there or making it cheaper so i don't yeah, know which one i would i would think they would want to keep the price where it is and just throw my memory in it versus dropping the price mm-hmm Although I don't know if I don't know if that's actually going to be as effective as just dropping the price, you know what I mean? Like I just, those who people who would care about it probably already have one. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, unless you're looking at um, you know families who would potentially buy the the Wii U for their children, um, a lot of them like, oh well, you already have a Wii U, and uh, you know, thinking that it's just the Wii. Um, so, so I think that is more the the market that they would target for something like that. And I don't necessarily think, because right now, basically, what they've been trying to do is here's this awesome bundle, and here's this game, you know, like here's all these different bundles with tons of games in them, and that's kind of what their strategy was last Christmas, and it didn't work very well, right? Like it's not like we saw this huge increase. Like we saw that they're profitable again, but it didn't make the Wii U a smashing success. Right. Well, one reason why and, I think more memory might be an option is because if you compare it with the PS4 and Xbox One, both have 500 gig hard drives in it, which I think both might will say we'll have one terabyte options later during this E3, so it, which makes a 32 gig laughable. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The 32 gigs is in this day and age is kind of unexcusable, right? So I think that that, that it's, space increase is pretty good. The only thing that makes it for, you know, slightly forgivable is that it's not a hard drive, it is flash. Yeah. Like, I'm looking at my wife's new 64-gig iPhone, and I'm like, this is double the capacity of the Nintendo. Yeah, I got a new iPhone, and mine's 64 as well. I'm just like, yeah, 
exactly. That is exactly right. It's kind of sad how small the memory is, right? So, I don't know. Well, there we go. So, should we go through our... Uh, no, nah, let's not do that. Do you, want, do, you want uh-uh. my, do you want my... <laughs> Do you want my bonkers one, which I don't think? Oh yeah, let's go through. Let's go any other any other <laughs> predictions so, and stuff. This is one that I want. I would love for it to happen, but I don't think it will. And it'll happen either at Nintendo's event or Square Enix's event. Uh, localization of Dragon Quest Seven, Eight, and or Ten. Nice, right on. I'm gonna say, um, for for just kind of other ones way out there. Um, we still don't know really what the big um, holiday game is. Oh, see, now that I, as soon as I see the holiday game for 3DS, I think that this new Pokemon game is going to be it. But I don't necessarily think that it's good enough to going to be good enough to carry it. Um, I feel like we're going to see either a new Zelda game on 3DS or oh, dang it, I'm trying to think what else. Or a new, I'm going to say 2D Metroid is something that would be great on 3DS. So, uh, that, that's, that's sort of a, a not, you know, that's a, one of my freebies, but I'm still, and, uh, I'm still I, waiting for zero mission custom. to be released because everyone else in the world's got it. Yeah. Uh, I'm still, uh, and I'm, I'm also in love with the idea of, uh, you know, custom me amiibos. That's the, I love that idea. Yeah. Like it, that's a bit of a wild card. Cause I mean the actual product, the actual production of that is like crazy. Yeah, that would. Oh, I'd nuts. imagine that'd be expensive as hell. It's just because it's not price effective to make one amiibo. Yeah, it it'd be at least fifty bucks. You know what they could do though? Um, what if you had like, if we're really gonna go down this rabbit hole for a second, what if you had a line of like, kind of like what they have with the Nindroids or whatever, where they have like the the interchangeable parts. Mr. Potato so Head Amiibo. You, yeah, so like let's say you've got like the regular you've got the different colors or whatever, right? You can have like a, an assortment of colors for the bodies, but you have a blank face and you have interchangeable hair pieces and you can have custom printed decals for the face. So, I don't know. Maybe that could work. Who knows? I'm I'm looking for solutions here, but uh I think that the best way to do it would be a custom printed uh amiibo, but the amount the number of people that like they can't even they can't even make a million of the same one and then sell them all and get them all to people right so it's not like i think that they're a long ways from doing that custom amiibo thing but i love the idea of it uh cool any other bonus bonus ones guys my other crazy like for the fences is new zelda 3ds yeah you you think so as well hey new yep. new 3ds zelda yeah i i kind of hope so i also think if if they're if Metro, if retro isn't doing metro here there we know retro is working on something and we also who's who are the people who did um Luigi's Mansion 2 is that next level studios or who's that sounds familiar oh, i can't remember who that is anyways i i i'm going to just drop that where it is but i think that we're going to get a new we're getting another new ip they've been getting a lot of positive feedback from from having so many new IP lately, we're going to see another... It is next level. Is it? Yeah. So it's either Retro or Next Level is going to have a new IP. I don't know which one. Um, I know my specific prediction is Metroid from Retro Studios, but we shall see. Okay, cool. Um, So should we go... Let's actually go through these five. So, Jesse, your five predictions are... Number one, new Mario Game at World Championship match. Um, Number two a sequel to the Pokemon X and Y games in the in the same sort of vein as Black 2 and White 2. Uh, that there will be at least five games we've never heard of, two of which will be out by the end of the year. And they are Nintendo published. Uh, Metroid from Retro Studios. And Star Fox will be their big holiday title. Justin, yours are Super Mario Galaxy 3 for Wii U. A sequel to the Luigi's Mansion series. Metroid on Wii U. They will talk about their digital strategy, which will involve Humble Bundle and DLC. And they will apologize for the Amiibo fiasco. In the way that they do. In the way that they do. Yeah. Please understand. And (laughs) 
And finally, uh, my predictions are uh, there will be a new Pokemon game with Amiibo tie-ins. Project Guard and Project Giant Robot will both be shown off, and one of the two will be announced, or one of the two will be released within two weeks of E3. Metroid from Retro Studios, the new membership service, including a paid premium tier, and some sort of a Wii U update slash price slash or some sort of a bundle will be announced uh, in order to sell more units. Uh, so cool, that is what we have. So that is that is the predictions. I'm excited to see. Do we have any bets on like what what does the winner get here? Nothing. Sorry, what's the what? What is what does the winner get? Are we are we, we said we said a crown. A crown. Okay. We, a crown. We need to we need to we need to get that started. We'll figure there. that out. We'll, go to we'll Burger, figure it out. We'll go to Burger King. Yeah. So Burger King. <laughs> what what I would say to those who who are listening to our podcast as well. Uh, we'd love to hear if you think we're crazy about our predictions. If you think we're dead right, dead wrong, uh, let us know. Contact us on our social media channels as well. We'd also love to hear about your E3 predictions are. Absolutely. We'll read off a bunch of those next week too, by the way, uh, for your E3 predictions. So let us know and we will... You know what? We've got game codes to give away. Oh, yeah. Tons of game codes to give away. We will, we will give away game codes to the ones that we like the most. How's that? How's that for motivation? Done. Done. Boom. Done. All right. Uh, let's get into what we've been playing. All right. So what we've been playing this week. Now, for those of you who are not aware, was it just yesterday this went up, the Nindy Bundle? Yeah. Yep. Uh, so go to HumbleBundle.com, and from now until the middle of, I don't know when it goes till Two the weeks 12th? or 12 yeah. days from now? 12 yeah, and so a half 12 days. days. So. Uh, yeah. So head over there, and this is the first Humble Bundle that is for console games from, uh, you know, from Humble Bundle. So go over there right now. I'm going to pull up their website. Um, and here hmm. are the games that you can get. If you pay $10, but, which, by the way, you can make all of this go to, to like, donation to charity and stuff. And so, and all of these, <laughs> most of these games... You know, it's a sweet deal. So just pay the ten bucks and get all of them. So I think take. that's June 9th at noon Central Time. There you go. So here are the games. For if you pay just even a dollar, you'll get Guacamole oh, for Wii U. Noon Mountain Time. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> uh, Guacamole, Guacamole for Wii U. Whoa, Dave for 3DS and Mighty Switch Force for 3DS. You can get all three of those games for a dollar. If you pay more than the average, which is currently nine dollars and twenty-five cents, you'll also get the fall ollie ollie for wii u and 3ds uh you'll get for both and i'll talk about that more in a second uh moon chronicles episode one and if you pay more than ten dollars you'll get stealth inc 2 and steam world dig for both wii u and 3ds you'll get a code for each and they so, announced there's still more games to be announced yes there's still more games coming so uh as for ollie ollie by the way i figured this out earlier um, well, I figured it out after I redeemed both of the codes, but there's still currently a buy one, get one free sale for Ollie Ollie. So if you buy it on Wii U, you get it for free on the 3DS. It triggers the discount just the same. Um, so you can give that other code to somebody else and they'll get both games for free. So that's a pretty sweet deal. I don't know if that's how it's supposed to work, but that's how it's working right now. So, um, so yeah, Ollie Ollie is also on there. Go and check it out, uh, and uh, we have some codes to give away as part of that deal as well, so we'll be giving those away if you would like them. Uh, what I personally have been playing this week is a few games from this that I had not played already. I had played I had played a few of these already. I'd played SteamWorld Dig, I'd played Moon Chronicles, and uh, Mighty Switch Force. What I had not played is... Well, I actually have played both Woe Dave and Ollie Ollie, but these are both games that for some reason, I played them on the Vita a while ago. I think they were both free at one point. Um, and they're both way... F I don't know what it is, but they're both way funner on the 3DS. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but uh, I played Ollie Ollie today for probably about an hour. Which, if you don't know what it is, it's kind of like a... We say it's like Skate or Die, almost. <laughs> if you've ever played like wow. old like old skateboarding games. Uh, you know, it's like a sort of Tony Hawk where you... You, you jump and grind and, and jump and, you know, it's basically like a skateboarding uh, endless runner sort of game uh, and it's really, really fun on the 3DS. I don't know what it is about 
about specifically on the 3DS. I I tried to play it on the on the Wii U and it didn't grab me, but I played it on the 3DS and it grabbed me instantly. I think what it is is the circle pad. The circle pad provides a little bit like I this is just the way that I personally experience it, but it there's more precision to it, right? Where it's a little bit more a little bit more snappy in in the feel for for the jumping and grinding and stuff like that and so i really like ollie ollie on the 3ds and it is the kind of game where you try and get through the level and you die and it instantly restarts the level and you continually try and do these combos and tricks and you know it really brings me back to tony hawk you know when i would play like tony hawk pro skater 2 or tony hawk pro skater 3 or whatever on like the ps2 and me and my friends would just play that forever. And it's a really fun 2D side-scrolling version of that. Uh, and it's really simple, but really, really fun. Um, and the other one is Woe Dave, which is... Uh, it's just like a classic sort of arcade-style um, game where you, you... I'm assuming you play as Dave, right? Where Whoa. Well, is his name actually Woe Dave? I don't know, but I just want to say when you're like Dave Whoa. Whoa Dave. Um it's it's really fun too where it's it's basically like uh there's these eggs falling and then the after a certain amount of time the eggs will turn into enemies and you have to throw eggs or skulls at the enemies in order to kill them, to collect coins and you you know, you wanna get as many coins as you can, basically. So yeah, it's the, really fun too. The graphics are more reminiscent of an Atari twenty six hundred or in television game. Yeah, it's really fun. It really reminds me, anytime I play a game like this, it reminds me of this game that was in the arcade across the street from uh, the school that I grew up at. Um, at ju- in junior high, there was a game called Snow Bros. I don't know if you've, if either of you have ever played Snow Bros before. No. Um, but it, it was the same sort of... Go. Same sort of deal where you would like run around. You're like little snowmen, and you throw little snowballs at the enemies, and it would slowly collect into this giant snowball, and then you push the snowball, and it kind of like roll down the down the level and take out all the enemies and stuff. It was really fun, but uh, I played it a ton. But anyways, I remember there uh, was a skater die arcade at the uh, grocery store I used to go to all the time growing up. Yeah, and I had no idea what I was doing, but I had fun playing it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So yeah, I also played a little bit of Guacamelee. I haven't played a ton of it, um, but I really like the art style so far. I probably played like half an hour of that game, um, and it's pretty fun too. Uh, although it, I don't know what it is, but this kind of game doesn't really grab me as much as I would hope. And you know what? I think it might honestly just be that I like handheld games better than console games. And so if it's on the hand, if specifically if it's on the 3DS, I seem to really latch onto it a lot more. I don't know why, but. Uh, anyway, so that's what I've been playing. What about you, Just, uh, Justin? What have you been playing this week? Yeah, so the, the primary thing I, I, I've been playing that, uh, that I should kind of speak about is uh, Sword and Soldiers 2, uh, which I mentioned in our last episode that I had a review copy. So I, uh, I reviewed that game, uh, play, played it for a bit, and uh, per, set a review actually up on uh, VGTribune.com, which you can check out. And our good editor of the show, Jesse, helped me uh, do some editing on that as well. Um, so this is a, a tower-based strategy game um, that uh, overall I thought was was pretty good. Uh, great graphics. We talked about before, very cartoon graphics. Comic book makes it pop. Um, there's some really fun kind of voiceover work they do to it. Um, there's some great features, including a, a skirmish, a two-player mode, and a single-player cl- uh, campaign. So overall, I, I thought it, I thought it was pretty good. Um, I gave it a 7 out of 10. A um, couple things that, that I, I'd want to kind of comment about it. I found the controls a bit difficult at times. Uh, so you get to cast a spell or call soldiers, and you're using your ZL and ZR button. Then you use have to use your analog stick, usually on your left hand, left finger, to figure out which of you know which of the four options you'd like to choose. And then you select A on the buttons to actually call them forward. So I kind of felt like my hands were like it was kind of like pat my head rub my belly, chew bubble gum. <laughs> um, and at times I felt like I was, you know, as any strategy game, as it becomes more intense and, and people are coming at you, you're trying to be quicker. And I felt like a lot of times I was slipping and it just wasn't um, catching what I wanted to do and, and trying to enable me as quickly as I wanted. Uh, the nice p- features it does have is it actually pulls it back and you can actually use the stylus as just a touch, like touching um, which soldiers you want to call where. 
But the moment you do that, you're now 100% dedicated looking at your stylist or sort of mm. your gamepad, right? So now you're not watching what's on the television. So you have what I would call the, the Captain Toad treasure tracker scenario, right? Where you have a beautiful HD TV, but instead you're looking at this gamepad and okay. trying to figure it out. The Yoshi game? Yeah. Yeah. Or like well, Treasure game. Tracker did the same thing as well, right? Well, you, you do so much work on, on the screen. Um, so I actually feel oh, like... The, Kirby. The Kirby game? Uh, Kirby, yeah, Kirby and, and the Rainbow Curse. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, and yeah, Code, yeah, that's it. Um, so the challenge. So I, I had a challenge with that, just the controls of it. Like it's a good game. It's fun. It's I kept coming back to it and playing, but like after after my sessions, like I very often like my hands kind of hurt, which is a really weird place to be because you're you're kind of stretched to that ZLZR. You've kind of got your thumb right on that dial and your other thumb right sitting below where the A A B X Y button is. So by the end of the session, like my like my hands kind of it sounds really wussyish, but they kind of hurt. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and, it, and um, so that was a challenge. The other, the other challenge I kind of have with it, and I, and I, I didn't put it in the review because I kind of struggled with the thought of it. But this game is priced at twenty bucks US. Hmm. Is it worth twenty bucks US? I think it's worth. I think it's worth the price. But the challenge I have is that when you think of like for Canada, for example, it's like twenty five bucks because the currency changes. But then I think, you know, if you're spending that money somewhere. You know, we live in a world of stuff like a Shovel Knight, right? Like, that's a $15 game. Um, and, and the value that I found out of that, the entertainment value, the fun, was exponentially higher than this. Um, mm -hmm. So it's a challenge of kind of like where indie games begin to almost overprice themselves from what they're delivering. I do fully believe that they deliver a lot for their value. I do believe that. But I wonder, like, when you're sitting there looking at what else in the eShop, is its price tag a bit too high for you want to for you to dive into and want to get engaged with it, I think especially when you see something like this humble bundle that just came out, right? I can I can pay ten dollars and get all these indie games, or I can pay twenty five dollars and get this one, right? right? So I think it's a challenge. And I also the other challenge I kind of have with it is you know we kind of live in the generations of iPhones and iPads, right? I can pick up a game very similar to this for two ninety nine out of the App Store. Right, yeah, uh, which which it feels a little bit more conducive and friendly to play on a tablet than necessarily this this uh, functionality of it. So, um, on its own merits as a game and what they offer, I, I'm I'm impressed with the cost. I think is is, is a bit high, uh, although I do believe there's a lot of content there as well. So, kind of a mixed review and mixed bags for me. I think if they definitely change the the schematics or the controls, um, it would make it better. But I but I, I, I at times wondered like is a strategy, you know, is a tower strategy game. The best is is a home console. The best platform to be playing that. Mm. So yeah, you know it's interesting because you know it seems like a lot of games, especially indie games, part of the part of the sort of long term strategy of it is. I mean, we we see it with with games like Oli Oli, even for example, right? Where that game came out like five years ago, probably, um, and it, it kind of slowly moves from platform to platform. Uh, and becomes a little bit cheaper as it moves around, you know, and it, it, it's got a little bit more of a long, uh, you know, a longer tail on it, whereas, whereas you know, a lot of these first-party games or, or AAA titles tend to be kind of a flash in the pan and then it's over with and whatever, right? Um, I wonder if, if part of it is just setting the price high earlier and so you're... Because whatever you release at, that is the most you're ever going to be able to charge for that game. Yeah. And especially with indies, with the Humble Bundle, you know, you're looking at literally, your game could be selling for, you know, I think the minimum is a dollar for the Humble Bundle. So your game could be selling for 35 cents, right? And so and so really wanting to, to kind of be confident enough in your own product to be able to go out and say, yes, we do want it. For 20, we we do feel that this game is worth twenty twenty dollars, right? And it's it's really hard though because at the same time the market is saying, you know, the the consumer is saying, I don't want to pay that much for that game, right? I I really don't want to. But then how do you recoup those development costs if you don't charge it? It's really it's I do not envy that sort of a situation for those guys because it's pretty difficult. It's a pretty difficult situation to be in. Yeah, uh, you know. and, and I and I did see them kind of you know take to Twitter and kind of have a conversation about why they're charging the value that they are charging and and I, and I do understand their logic. There is a lot packed in that game. Like I, I definitely agree with that. But it it is kind of that idea of knowing what else is in the market, 
right? Yeah. Not not only from like what what you're competing against in your own market space, like the eShop, but then also what what are you competing against in stuff like the App Store, um, and the product that you deliver as well. So, you know, I I think again, it's a good game, but I think there there are some there are some things they need to work on a bit there. Cool, right on. Uh, Jesse, what have you been playing this week? So, as I said earlier, I was we did a road trip to Oklahoma, so I was looking around for a game that I could play in the car for hours on end without getting too uh, bored with it. And I was uh, actually looking for Dragon Quest VI, but for some reason I couldn't find my cart. So I found Dragon Quest IX. So I started playing that again. And you know what I, I, I actually forgot most of that game, but what I do remember of it is that the first time through, it took me 75 hours to beat the main game. Holy crap, dude. 75. <laughs> but, and I guess it, in that, now that I say that, I'm like, oh, maybe. Yeah. That's and, kind of, that is a long time, but, but anyway. It, it had additional content that was available through Wi-Fi Connect, which is now no longer available, which uh, gave additional things to do in the game after the game ended. And I ended up putting over in over 250 hours into that game. So, <laughs> wow, that so, is nuts, dude. So I, I know I, I, so at this point I know I'm not going to be able to do the post game stuff. I, so, but I got, you know, maybe ten hours into it, you know, through 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 the trip down and trip back, and then continuing to play it since I've been home, and I'm having fun with it, and yeah, you know, kind of what got me in the mood to wanting to play it again is, or any Dragon Quest game is. Last week, uh, Square Enix announced that Dragon Quest VIII is being remade for the 3DS. Uh, Dragon Quest VIII being originally a PS2 game, which was the first game that had voice acting. So, it'll be interesting to see what they end up doing with the 3DS, but as far as I know at this point, it's just Japan only, because their previous two (laughs) Dragon Quest games have not come out of anywhere outside of Japan yet as I said again earlier in the episode <laughs> so I'm hoping that one of them or one or more comes out eventually but I'm starting to not hold my breath anymore Cause, right on because Dragon Quest 10 was actually released on the Wii a year before Wii U re- was released so that's now a four year old game yeah the likelihood that that's coming out at all I mean isn't there a isn't there a theater rhythm Dragon Quest in Japan now. Yeah, that, a thing? that is a thing, and I, pre- I, I'll be surprised if that doesn't come over, because it won't take it won't take much effort to localize that. Even if it's just an eShop only deal, hey. Yeah, if it, it seems like that's kind of the route that they've been taking for some of those lesser, um, you know, those less intense or less successful sort of. Though so when the second theater rhythm game did came out. You know, for the Final Fantasy, I actually bought like the deluxe edition set. You know, with the, came with a whole bunch of extras. Probably shouldn't have bought it, but uh, I did, and so I have a physical copy of that. But you know, when if when and if this comes out for the Dragon Dragon Quest Theater Rhythm, I'll I'll be picking that up too. Very cool. Right I, on. I I. I I always, whenever I turn a new a, a new game on, I always just let it let the uh, attract mode play through and just listen to that s- song. Especially nine adds a whole, a lot more instrumental. Uh, you know, not a, I can't I can't put my words together today. Uh, it, <laughs> it adds more. It seems it has it has more tracks in, in its song. It just sounds fuller than you know playing through. I played most of four earlier this year i played most of five last year and just the soundtrack just seems more bigger with this uh, it's got more oomph yeah it's got more oomph with nine cool right on well that's that's awesome um cool uh you guys do you guys hear that in the distance it's the postman The postman. Nothing. Nothing better than the smell of the postman. In smell the of the postman. <laughs> Is that that nice fragrant? You know. By the way, you ever think like the postman? Probably he's. 
probably smells like I don't know, like like the smell of like body odor and dirt. I don't know. Oh yeah, I don't I don't imagine him to be a good smelling man. He smells like a track mm, meat. No. You know? <laughs> probably sweaty. I would I would say that sounds all right. <laughs> Right on. So yeah. speaking of, uh, speaking I, I of... used to I used to be in track, and I remember our, when I was in high school, and our first big event at the end of her, at the start of every season was an indoor meet, and that gym stank as all hell by the end of the night. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I'm talking about. <laughs> that's awesome. I was glad to get back outside again. Yeah. Uh, cool. I'm gonna read the first email here, guys. It says, "Hey guys, it's Chris again. I wanted to ask you guys about." From what I understand is Nintendo's only game with voice chat, Pokemon. I love Pokemon very much, but the game's been the games have been a dime a dozen lately. I'm actually hoping I don't have to beat eight gen leaders this fall. This coming from a guy who has a complete living national Pokedex on Pokemon Bank. The question is, when is the Pokemon equivalent of Ocarina of Time coming? What can this series do to break free from the rote hell it's currently gotten itself into? Thanks, Chris. Um, I don't yeah, think it well, can. <laughs> I think well. Here's to address it. First of all, the only game with with voice chat. There are other games with like Mario Kart Eight has voice chat in the lobbies and stuff. Um, there are other games that I think have had voice chat. It is the one that has the the most. Strangely enough, it's one of the most integrated. You know, it. I mean, the quality of the voice chat isn't that great though. It's pretty pretty much sounds like a tin can. Um. But yeah, what do you what do you guys think, um, Justin or, or Jesse? Like, what do you think they could do for that series uh, that would rejuvenate it? You know, the, saying it's the Ocarina, the Ocarina of Time moment, so like creating it into something big and amazing. What do you think, Jesse? Uh, I don't know, I've I've heard it suggested, but from on another show, I don't remember what show I was listening to, but uh, you know, if they want wanted to you know reboot Pokemon in a way, you know. But you know, started over with a fresh 150, whether it's a, a new batch or a mix of old and new, and just say that's it. But I think that's going to piss off a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, I don't they, think they, that... they want their collection of 750 of them or however how many there are. Especially since now that they have Pokemon Bank and they've sold the idea of, uh, you know, of your here is your collection of 750, right? Like that needs to maintain its value. You know what I mean? Like they're almost beholden True. to that, to so that they, there. So I don't think they're going to reduce the number. Right. Um, but, but I do think that the gameplay needs a pretty big overhaul uh, in order to be appealing again, because other than the, the sort of the group of players that will play through the main campaign and then do nothing but, uh, you know, try and min max the stats of the of their pokemon and and you know like uh, like my brother for example is huge into pokemon and he's he'll be like sitting on his 3ds some like this was a while ago i don't he's he's actually gotten into monster hunter instead which is a whole different level of grindy gameplay it's a similar sort of crowd you know similar sort of draw but uh i he, i would like you know, he, I would go over to his house or whatever, and I'd see him, and he'd be sitting on his 3DS, like, hey, what are you doing? And he's driving back and forth on his bike, you know, hatching Pokemon eggs and, like, trying to get that perfect, the Pokemon with the perfect stats, as you know, with the Pokemon breeding and stuff like that. Wow. And, um, you know, it's like, wow, this is really what this game has come to. Um, I've which, never I mean, been that, that that's, hardcore with it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, like, people that, it, but that's kind of what, that game has started catering towards is to encourage that sort of gameplay and i think that is a that is frankly not a good direction for that franchise to go um where your post game is pokemon breeding and stuff like that it needs to it needs to go back the reason why the original game was so great wasn't because the stats were there it wasn't because of you know the mechanics of the pokemon battles it was specifically because it felt like a really cool adventure in this new world with new pokemon and you know with these creatures that had all these cool abilities and this whole world and it needs to get back to those roots you know where it's an adventure and like lately it doesn't feel like an adventure it feels like it feels like a bunch of people going through the same story that they've gone through every single time 
with a with a new villain, and that's about it. With way more characters or way more Pokemon than they need. Uh, you know, getting back to that sort of exploration, and I've always kind of imagined this sort of game where uh, where they where they kind of turn it more into a 3D sort of game, almost like a like a Zelda sort of game, where you know you could. You can imagine where you know there, there's the the concept of HMs or what they're hidden machines or whatever. But basically, in the in the games currently, it's things like quick travel. You know, you use the HM, whatever it is, for flying or cut or you know traveling on water and stuff like that. But you can imagine um, you know having that sort of thing in a 3D environment where you're using your Pokemon. You can summon your Pokemon to do specific actions. Uh, similar to you know functioning similar to what a what the bombs do in Zelda to unlock new paths and stuff like that but it's all in this sort of 3d environment um, I would love to see something like that happen uh, the idea of the the Pokemon MMO has been thrown around I actually think that's not really that good of an idea anymore because they'd end up just doing what they currently are doing in an online format and I don't think that's a good idea so I don't know. I think that the spirit of Pokemon is what has been lost for me, and that is what they need to reconnect with. Uh, with that original sort of, you know, red and blue, going out on a cool adventure, maybe maybe pull back on the cartooniness a little bit and, and give get a little bit more, um, I don't want to say realism, but, you know, a little bit more, and I don't want to even say grit, but it just feels like that as it's transitioned away from the original GameCube generation, uh, it's it's kind of developed this art style that I don't feel reflects the original games very well. So anyway, I've kind of gone on for a while about that. What do, what do you think, Jesse or, or Justin? So that would draw you into it. Obviously, we all know that I am a Pokemon proficionado. Yes. So <laughs> here is my complete opinion. Um, I'm going to go for, and again, I, I have no context of Pokemon, so I'm going to tell you right now what I think. And it's along the idea of Zach's grittiness. I'd like to see Pikachu sweet, sweet murder the trainer. And it becomes <laughs> a dark, dark pitch for Pokemon. Gritty reboot. Yeah. Didn't PETA put up Where he struggles like with moral dilemmas. It does that? I don't know. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. And maybe he becomes a villain. And he becomes maybe. overpowered with, with hunger or, or, or becomes unstoppable with hunger and rage and then destroys all the other like like stalks every single other Pokemon one by one and slowly kills them. Yeah. So yeah. there can only be one Pokemon. Yeah, that makes sense to me, man. You're welcome. It's like like Pokemon fighters, but like throwing a little bit of Mortal Kombat in there. And, and a little like, bit of Highlander. There can only like, be oh, by the way, YouTube. that is that was something more that like, I totally... That was more like Zatch Bell than anything else. <laughs> by the way, that's Look something that up totally... if you don't know what that is. <laughs> we totally forgot to bring up Pokemon fighters. Um, which is their Pokemon fighting game that has been, you know, around for a while. I think we're going to see that at E3. I'm just going to throw that in there. It's not a official prediction, but just wanted to remind everybody that that exists. Um, yeah. So, yeah. The only other thing I can think of is to find some way to get it away from turn-based. Have it more real-time action sequences with the fighting yeah. and the combat. You know, I kind of, I kind of think about, you know, in Brawl, where you controlled, uh, imagine like a 3D platformer almost, um, but it, imagine it like in in Smash Brothers Brawl, you controlled the Pokemon, but the trainer would follow the 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 Pokemon around when you played as the Pokemon trainer. Imagine a 3D platformer where you control the Pokemon. And you still see the the trainer running behind or whatever, but you could cycle through your Pokemon in order to solve different platforming challenges and stuff like that. I would totally play a game like that. So you're playing Skylanders. There, yeah, hey, hey, I guess hey. so. <laughs> oh my gosh, dude! What if that was? What if that was like Amiibo? Style? Oh no! That is the Pokemon Amiibo game right there. Done. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh man. Wow, we just uncovered that one. That that is a nightmare. Uh, cool, uh, Justin. Why don't you go ahead and read our our uh, other email here? Sure, give me one second here. Do 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 do. Okay, our next one is uh, Hey Nintendo Dads, Holden Moffat here. Fun question: Is it possible that Nintendo held back system back system power on the Wii U because they knew something we don't? 
AAA companies have grown stagnant in their uh, risk adverse models because development is so costly and smaller developers are being swallowed by the congested markets of Steam and iOS. Top it off with a general consumer distrust in the air due to freemium practices. Uh, can any parallels be made to 1983 and is there an impending rearrangement where the NX is the turtle that wins the race? Feel free to tell me how I am wrong. Uh, P.S. In regards to Splatoon, do you have hope in the new generation of Nintendo developers? Uh, is another Miyamoto being hearkened? So let's maybe first deal with the P.S. statement and then deal with the meat of the question. Okay. So um, I'll go on, on that one first. I have absolute faith in the, in the new developers for Splatoon. I love the fact that, um, you know, we talked about it before that I think Splatoon is going to be, you know, kids who are 10, 15, uh, 10, 11, 12, even younger kids like my kids right now, this is going to be their generation smash potentially, their generation's introduction into the world of, of Nintendo, not through a, an 8-bit plumber like we may have traditionally had, but through colorful, colorful kids that look like squids that they can somehow relate to in style and just kind of fun, charismatic attitude. So I think so. I have faith in, in them, and I actually think that, you know, we need to begin, Nintendo begins needs to lean into IPs that are not, you know, Mario and Zelda and Metroid. Although we've obviously talked in our E3 how much we love those. That's the house that has been built by Nintendo, but now they have to let these developers build a community around that idea as well. So I, I have actual faith in them. I'm excited to see what they're going to do with it. I'm excited. I'll be excited when they let other people have the helm of 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 games like Mario and Zelda, who have not been there forever, wherever like like Miyamoto. Um, and the reason that being is that when you get to a point where fans become the creators of something they grew up in, there's a different kind of like fan love uh, and association with it and a care for these properties. And I think, for example, like what J.J. Abrams is doing to Star Wars or Star Trek is a great example of, of growing up with the love and affinity for these for these properties and then being given the keys and said, you do what you think is right. And I think then they become very fan-related and fan-driven. So I have great faith in them. Uh, I'm excited by it. Um, are they going to hit them out of the park right away? Maybe not, but I think that under the mentorship um, and guidance of Miyamoto, um, I think that they're going to have success. And that's one thing that Nintendo does really well, right? Like they, they bring in the you know, people who have been doing it forever, like Miyamoto, and really care and develop and assist and coach and mentor these new developers um, that I think you're creating a longevity of Nintendo um, far beyond just the IPs, but rather the, the, the brain trust and infrastructure around Nintendo. Off of, off of my soapbox, boom. Oh, awesome. Yeah, what about you, Jesse? What do you think? How are you feeling about the new the new generation of Nintendo? Um, I th I think they you know they, they have a lot of uh, ex back experience to look on and uh, should be I think they should be able to uh, continue on when you know the the the, the Miyamoto and the Iwata st all start to retire, which I imagine will be getting soon because they're getting out on an age. Um, I think you know I I, I think. We'll see a Nintendo making games for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, you know, I mean, we've even kind of seen Miyamoto lately. You know, he has kind of moved into more of that mentorship sort of role, right? Where, he, yes, he has his sort of special projects and stuff he's working on. But as we see him continue to, to you know, move more into that mentorship role, I think that that is the best place for him to be because that's that is going to be his you know and not just him you know i mean like the same goes for people like aonuma and uh you know the the people behind you know all of the hit mario games lately that moving into that more producer uh mentor sort of role is going to be great for these new developers and these new teams and i think that splatoon is the first uh the one of the first big games that is you know showing this new blood really brings some new creativity out and, um, you know, just to be kind of the downer in the room, though, like this also is going to mean, uh, you know, this is the first sort of instance where we're really seeing Nintendo embrace that sort of idea of uh, content delays and post launch patches and things like that with Splatoon launching with, you know, much less than I think that everybody would like to 
to have seen it be launched with, you know, with with multiple game modes coming later this year. Uh, so, and whether that's whether that's strategic content releases for marketing purposes and continuing hype, or whether or not it's just because it's just not done, I think it's a combination of both. But uh, I think we're also going to see some of the some of the negatives that we've seen in other parties for quite a while. It's starting to bleed in, in, into Nintendo as well, which is which is kind of a downside of the same of the same coin. Yeah, because the. So, yeah. I just looked up to see how old Donkey Kong is, and it, it hit arcades in Japan in summer of '81. So that's almost mm-hmm. 34 years. Wow. So, um, so does somebody want to explain to me <laughs> what the rest of this question is asking? Well, it sounds like he kind of had multiple thoughts going on. Um, as for did did Nintendo hold back? power in the system because of something that they know and we don't uh no that's just them cutting costs um (laughs) n64 era they had the most powerful machine and they probably sold the least and then so they started throttling back a little bit gamecube they were the middle of the road xbox was more powerful ps2 was least powerful and we we know what those numbers look like so they took a play out of that book and went okay with we will we'll will go even uh they went to the bottom of the lot of the power and it paid off early on and then <laughs> petered off quick and so again we we you they continued the pattern with being as powerful as the previous generations of the consoles i think i think the interesting thing about the nintendo is uh, and i think jesse i think it's smart that you made your statements about you know kind of like the n64 and and even you know, I think the SNES in, in some degrees as well. You know, when when they began to approach the early you know late nineteen nineties and early two thousands with the GameCube, with the with the DS, and with the Wii U, and where we've led to now, um, Nintendo decided to step out of the graphical foot, you know, the gra- graphical arms race, so to say, of being the most powerful device, and instead they decided to rely on fun. Right, um, and the idea of, of building uh, fun in what their games are, and building people to come together and play their games. So, I think um, Start, starting with the NES generation, there, you know, it, there has not been a single generation where the most powerful spec machine had the most sales. Never, yeah. never yeah. happened. Yeah, I th- I think when you talk about kind of like the the 1983 parallels, and I think really what you're saying here is that like. You know, we're seeing we're seeing you know big budget companies who are who are producing out, uh, you know, Assassin's Creed and Call of Duty every single year. You know, is th- does that high turnover and you know, expedited um, development times eventually create a flop? Now, uh, that can wreck the market. Now, we we know that you know we talked about like the the ET Atari game that didn't you know although it's blamed as toppling the entire video game industry in the late '80s. That wasn't the only thing, right? Yeah, like it, there was a lot of other pieces that got us well, there. Yeah, it it was like the the straw that broke the camel's yeah. back because because they, they I think E. T. and Pac Man they thought those would be system sellers and actually put, produced more cartridges than consoles that have sold. Yeah, and obviously <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow! You know, you know, and with uh and and back then, um, you know. They didn't have a way to uh, ha- hand to control third parties like like they do now. You know, starting with Nintendo, with NES, with limiting what third parties can do. So they just they they put out shovelware, and which so the good games were harder to find. And if you you know if if Grandma's going to a an EB Games or whatever was, was game stores was out there, you can find you know a bin full of five dollar crap games, and so you know why buy this thirty dollar game on the shelf when I buy you know I can buy ten of these, and so mm-hmm. it was hard for the good games to be noticed, and therefore they didn't sell either, and that's what caused the eighty three crash. Yeah, I mean, I, th- I think the other interesting part in regards to that is just the disposableness of games, and I think, especially when you have these AAA titles that are producing so quickly, you kind of very quickly forget 
Um, right? It's it's kind of like okay, well, I've played Assassin's Creed in, in two weeks. I finish it. I'm done with it. Next, right? This disposableness of it. Um, this kind of what I would call fast food video gaming. Whereas I feel like um, you know when Nintendo creates content, and this has been their approach since um, since since the NES. Um, it's about creating content that has a life cycle to it. I mean, there's making some very broad statements, obviously, about the games, but just the general approach, I think, as an industry, I mean, as a company, is to create content that has a life cycle to it longer than a couple of weeks, right? Their mm-hmm. intention their intention with Splatoon, I mean, we even look at the strategy with Mar- Mario Kart and Smash. Splatoon's the same way. They want you to be playing it long, longer. Uh, they don't want you to forget about it and kind of move on to the next thing. They want you to enjoy it and really get your value out of that. And I think that I think that's so often why you hear Nintendo, you know, it's like, oh, well, the console wars right now. Oh, you mean between Sega and, and, and um, Microsoft, or sorry, Sony and Microsoft, right? They don't consider Nintendo in that track because Nintendo really blazes its own trail. And I think that that creates a longevity for the product, right? I, I, I genuinely say, and I think that the day that Nintendo decides to leave the video game space, we are in trouble. We are in a, a lot of trouble from a design perspective, from a fun perspective, from from an innovation perspective, um, because so much of the archetype or architecture that is modern video gaming now has been because of the work that Nintendo did and the products that they've created and the fans that they've created. Right? We're all we're all fans of, of Nintendo, but we're all fans of video gaming, and a lot of that right. for most of us roots all the way back to playing our first video games with Nintendo. And, Sorry, right. Jesse. And I think I've mentioned this before. If you look at your traditional controller, almost every piece of that was done by Nintendo first. You know, yeah. D pads, you know, the NES and the Game and Watch. You know, shoulder buttons, SNES, Rumble, N sixty four, analog stick, N sixty four. Wireless is for the Wave Bird, right? Like yeah. tons of. Right. You know, and uh, I think four, I think four face ahead. buttons, SNES. And, yeah. And so when and, you at, sorry, go ahead, uh, go ahead, Zach. I was just going to say, like, and it also, you know, they, they, Nintendo really exercises a certain level of, you know, whereas it seems like sometimes Microsoft and Sony a lot of times are kind of, you know, trying to give people what they want. And not that that's necessarily a bad thing, but Nintendo is driven more by what do we want? You know, they're very internally driven. They're driven. They have these, you know, the, this sort of family first these principles in place and we, we want to make fun games that are family accessible and um, yeah, yeah, and, and you know those sorts of things and that is always what they're focused on regardless of what the market is doing regardless of what um, you know even sometimes regardless of even what consumers want they're doing whatever their base core principles are which is why they continue to give really quality experiences even if it doesn't always match up with what the market is asking for at the time, which is kind of what we've seen in the Wii U. You can see, I, you know, I can just imagine, you know, the the people at Nintendo who are like, the Wii U is such a great idea. It's such a great sort of, you know, this great product that we all would love in our lives and, you know, kind of oblivious to the fact that the market doesn't want it, but they want it and they think it's a great idea and it matches their core principles um, and those principles have brought them to great success before, and they will, those same principles will bring them to great success again in the future. Um, and that is really what they bring to you know the the video game industry as a whole is that sort of creativity, yeah. uh, you know, and that sort of focus on what they what really has has brought them the success, not just financial success, but just su- success as a as a creative company in general. So. Yeah, Ninten- Nintendo's the company that's willing to take a risk, yeah. right? For good or for bad, whether you like the Wii, like the Wii U, like the, the, the DS, whatever, Nintendo's the company that kind of takes the risks for the rest of the industry in a lot of ways, and lessons are kind of learned from that that are, that are good or bad, right? Like the Wii U is, is very different than the Wii, right? Very different. Uh, no one expected the Wii to be the success it was, um, but the core principles of, of design, quality, family... Um, couch play. These are things that Nintendo holds very dear to their heart, which have allowed them su- the success. Um, yeah, hold that, the, the, that the initial scarcity. To get very, yeah, let's say very right. amiibo like. Yeah, um, <laughs> and, and holding the question you actually have in here, the line is the NX. Uh, the um, is the NX the turtle that wins the race? I don't think the NX is. I think it's Nintendo. Nintendo is the turtle that wins the race because I think 
you know, you know, will Sony or Microsoft burn off and eventually something else will happen? It's tough to say, you know, maybe not. But I also wonder if, you know, back in the early 90s, if we ever thought that Sega would fail, right? Mm-hmm. But Nintendo continues to do what they do. And I think in that, that very true mottos of what they are, for good or for bad, I think will keep them to win the race. And I think that their, their, their motions toward, I, you know, going right along with what you said is Nintendo being the, the winner here. Um, I think that their efforts toward mobile is a good indicator of that, too, where they're going to be around no matter what it takes. Um, and even if that means that the where they are changes, were you going to say something, Jesse? Yeah, uh, uh, the few t- and you know you said they don't they do more of what they want to do versus whatever what people want them to do, and in the few times they do actually listen to people, they're normally listening to the Japanese audience, not necessarily Western audiences. So that does give make give them a kind of a different perspective over what something Microsoft or even Sony would do, because Sony does listen to both to both uh, when they when they do listen and you know, a very very you know very Japanese company with Japan you know their stakeholders are all Japanese you know the North every the North, Nintendo of America is owned by NCL and so they're uh, that sometimes it, it works for them in some ways it doesn't work for them in other ways but in the, in the end it works for them yeah absolutely right on well thank you holden uh for your question and chris uh to both of you thank you very much and uh we are grateful for your for your interaction man i love our freaking fans can i just say that yeah our fans are great you just did speak speak yeah. speaking of I fans, will say it again. our fans are the best yeah we absolutely are and i actually want to give some shout outs to a couple of our fans right now if that's all right yeah uh, oh, i'll i'll allow it i appreciate that thank you sir <laughs> Uh, one of our first shout outs is actually to, uh, I'm probably going to say this wrong, I'm sorry, uh, Mal- Malik Emmers or, uh, at, or at Rose F. Death, Rose F. Death on Twitter, uh, who shared the exact same birthday as Jesse this week. So happy birthday uh, to you, Malik. Um, and also, um, I was seeing that Malik is a huge amiibo hunter or, or amiibo fan. He actually even has a toque that reads, Amiibo Hunter uh, patch sewn on the top of his. So uh, happy birthday and happy hunting that's coming up here uh, on Friday as well. I also want to give a shout out to Randall, um, Randall Hinsley uh, on Twitter, who actually reached out, out to us. He purchased the, hun- the Humble Bundle. He actually gave us a code uh, to give away to our community as well for Mighty Switch Force, Switch Force 3DS. So thank you, Randall. We appreciate that. We said to him, hey, we appreciate the code. Do you mind if we give it out to our, to the community? Randall, of course, said absolutely. He's a member of the community. He's a fan, uh, and we love to give stuff out to our fans as well. So thank you so much, Randall, from us. Uh, and we're obviously going to work uh, to make sure that we give fans this as well. So thank you so kindly. Um, there is a lot of response throughout Twitter um, throughout this week as we talked about the Splatoon drop or Splatoon information kind of you know stumbling its way out of the gate. Um, we saw um, Inkling Matt who who reached out to us. Uh, Monster Atlas, who's reached out to us, um, uh, you know, a lot. Again, a lot. Just you know, Zach said a couple moments ago. We really have. I truly believe. We say it every week. Like the best community um, in what we do. So thank you guys so much. But 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 Zach, how do they reach us? How do they become part of our community? Absolutely. You can head over to all of the social medias except Google Plus because we banned it. Remember it's dead. that. It's dead to us. Uh, you can go over to Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. Uh, and look for us. We're at Nintendo Dads. Uh, you can email us, nintendodads at gmail.com. Twitch.tv slash Nintendo Dads is where we stream our episodes every Wednesday night, uh, roughly 9 o'clock Mountain Time, probably 9.30. You better just show up 9.30. Yeah, it's pretty uh, honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> stay Call- tuned. To, stay tuned to those social media outlets too, because that's where we're going to be giving a lot, a lot of codes away. We've got codes for SteamWorld Dig. Uh, we've got codes for Mighty Switch. We've got codes for uh, Ollie Ollie. We've got codes for Guacamole. We've got lots of codes to give away. So make sure you're following us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, because that's where we're going to give those things away, guys. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you can also call in and leave us a voicemail. That's nine two nine two five N Dads. Nine two nine two five six three two three seven. Huge thanks to ocremix.org for music, uh, both the intro and outro music, and also to Carter Johnson for our amazing artwork. You can he- 
head over to megacarter.tumblr.com and see all of her awesome artwork. You guys go over and check out her artwork because she is a freaking talented uh, human being and uh, we are so grateful for her awesome artwork for us. Uh, finally, if you want to do just one thing this week to make the world a better place, go over to iTunes and leave us a five-star rating on iTunes for Nintendo Dads there. Uh, that helps us get to in th as many ears as possible uh, you know, for the rest of humanity to enjoy what you have just finished enjoying. So please, oh please, go over there and leave us a review. You can also do so on Stitcher. And of course, go over to VGTribune.com to listen to us over there as well, which is where you also can find Justin's review of Swords and Soldiers 2. Two. And uh, yeah, uh, everybody, go and ink yourself this weekend on Splatoon and get some Amiibos, and we will see you all next week. Bye bye All right, we're gonna we're we're gonna give away our first giveaway. Here is what we're gonna do. Are we really? Uh, yeah. The live peeps. Yeah. Here's what we're gonna do. If you are still listening to the very end of this episode, to be able to get your copy of a free code for Steam World Dig, I want you to rewind back, find that phone number that Zach provided, and call into our line. Oh Be the snap! First person to call in and tell us your E3 prediction. And make sure that you leave us an email address or a Twitter handle that we can contact you back. And we will provide you a code for SteamWorld Dig for either 3DS or for your Wii U. And this will also go for anyone who's in Europe. If you're in Europe, we can also provide you a code for your 3DS for SteamWorld Dig. All right, guys? So, again, go back, call into our line, tell us what your one E3 prediction, leave us an email address or a Twitter contact where we can reach you directly. Hot dang, dude. How can you argue with something like that? SteamWorld Dig is one of my favorite game. It's really fun. I awesome. actually am going to go play it right now. You should. All right, I'm going to fade this music out. Peace, everybody. Peace.